Salute to you all. The brave never fall. Self-love through freedom and connection. So feel free to connect to the brave never fall on these social media platforms. If you find anything of value in this following podcast, hit that like button. Subscribe and share and support the brave and bold tribe growing one purposeful soul at a time. How are you feeling? Take a moment to do a self check-in for yourself. How are you feeling mentally? How are you feeling emotionally? How are you feeling physically? How are you feeling spiritually? Are you feeling balanced? Are you still journeying on an intentional, purposeful path? How are you feeling? Balancing yourself is a healthy, daily practice that will reliably keep you in harmony with your entire mind, body, heart, and soul. Clear your mind. Take a moment of silence for yourself. Right now, in the moment. You are here now. How are you feeling? Life is only what you perceive it to be in the moment. In the moment. That is the only thing we have control over in our lives from moment to moment. Because a second from now isn't here. A second ago, you were something else. Or someone else, I should say. So the only thing we can really ever affect is those one little micro seconds of time those seconds that you have in your life, those are the only things you really can control. But we can put things in a sequence, just like discipline. But we don't look at moment to moment. We look we look at it how it's drawn together. We look at it as a bridge to our future self. And with our minds, we can think an hour ahead, a day ahead, a year ahead. So the question is, if we can do that, and we're doing that without even thinking about it, What else are we doing that we aren't thinking about in each moment? 
there's so many things that we do that is incredible that have really life-changing results every single time we do it we do it daily there's things that we know we have to do we don't think about it and we know those things we shouldn't do and we don't have to think about it so our perception of life is really how we make it are we looking a day ahead or are you looking just an hour ahead are we focusing on one task or are we focusing on many when we go outside do we see beauty or do we see that it's not snowing do we go to a place and think to ourselves there's too many people here or it's not enough. Each person we talk to and each person we encounter, all those little microseconds, all those moments add up to that person's perspective, their perception on what they see and what they feel and hear and touch around them. And in the moment when we can tap into that and we know what we're seeing is, or perceiving is our own personal perception of life that brings a whole new definition to who you are as a unique person in this world we each see the world as we perceive it we can look at something some place or someone feel a certain way about them in that moment and simply moments later a day later a year later see them in a completely different perspective we need all of who we are to perceive and comprehend what we are looking at and how it affects us. We cannot see the ocean floor by simply looking at the surface of an ocean. And we cannot see open space by simply looking up at the clouds. To see the ocean floor, we must get in a better position to do so. And to see space, we must wait until nightfall. Or better yet, break free of the atmosphere completely and explore the universe. Without a clear vision, our perceptions are just like a dream, a fantasy. We can believe whatever we wish to believe, regardless if it is true, false, exists, or not at all. No one is forced to perceive life. We have a choice. We see what we know. And what we don't know, we either wonder about or attempt to find out the truth about what we don't know. Internally, we are no different. We must continue to ask ourselves questions, to explore our lives without self-imposed restrictions, discover wherever it is we need to know about ourselves to become better versions of ourselves. We are not gods, titans, omnipotent, or supernatural. We are bounded by the laws and rules of life, but that doesn't mean we are not self-empowered enough to adapt and evolve into whatever we are most aligned with in our life. The passing of the torch from your former self to your new purposeful self is powerful, beautiful, and needed in order to keep ascending to a life of personal fulfillment. The stairs of life are infinite. We all have a set of stairs that we either go up on or go back down on. It's more difficult for others to find the strength and discipline to climb them. Some fear the infinite past. But the ones that surrender to the fact that the stairs are not going away choose to find purpose in the reality of what's in front of them. They choose to face the unknown external because they are balanced internally. Life, Episode 7, Rediscovering Your Life from Sea to Sky. I have talked many times in previous podcasts and really what the Brave Number Fall is all about, which is facing challenges and being bold and brave while facing those challenges. Regardless if the challenge is something that is self-imposed, something that we take on, some new goal, some new job, some new relationship, anything that requires you to trust yourself to get through the situation. I've talked about us facing that mountain and walking up to the mountain and not taking the easy route, knowing that there is no end to the journey and that this is a big, big obstacle in front of you. But that doesn't mean that you don't have the willpower and the fortitude to actually take on the challenge and not only take it on, exceed your every expectation while you're doing it, learning while you're doing it 
having fun, laughing, and enjoying life while you're doing it. Leveling up, getting stronger physically, mentally, spiritually, emotionally, while you're doing it. All to find out that once you cross that mountain, you get over the hump, you're down in the valley, you look up, the clouds break, and you see a bigger mountain. You see a volcano in front of you. And not only is there a volcano, it's erupting. Now, this is all mind play. This is just a visualization. Obviously, if you saw a volcano erupting, you were standing in front of it. My advice to you would not be keep walking forward towards it. It would be go run on the other side of that mountain and try to take shelter. But for the sake of just having something to visualize, something we can all connect with, walking over a mountain and having climbed it and hit ups and downs, the peaks and the valleys, dealing with, with that particular challenge, and you literally get down into the valley and you see something like a volcano in front of you. We can think of all types of scenarios that kind of mirror that in life, you know, just in general progression of life. Just, you know, you get through middle school, you're going to high school. You get through high school, you're going to college. Even everyday little mundane tasks that you do that we don't even think about each day. You know, just, just the progression of a day. As the day go on, you're going to get tired. Things become harder. Stuff that was easier for you to do and focus on and concentrate on earlier in the day, suddenly they become a little more difficult once you get a fatigued and you're exhausted and you've had things interfere with you throughout the day. You can do the same thing the beginning of the day at night and it will have a different connection to you. Your perception of that particular thing is going to be different. So if we get to a place where we're looking at a volcano, we already know that we can get past things. We've already conquered the mountain. Where do you find that little extra juice that you need? As I just said a second ago, if there's something at the end of the day that you have to do, that's an obligation, but now you're dead tired and you thought at the beginning of the day you were looking at that task in the future and you're thinking, I'm going to crush that this evening, th tonight. I'm going to... This evening, I'm prepared, and tonight, I'm going to crush it. You get to this evening, and all of a sudden, you didn't take into account all the other things that were going to happen to you before your preparation. And then by the time you get to what you actually want to do, you're exhausted. You're mentally wore out. You're emotionally drained. You say, you know, not tonight. I'll do it tomorrow. I'll do it next week. I'll do it next year. That is essentially looking at the volcano and just standing there and saying, at some point I'm going to start walking towards it and maybe I'll find some people along the way where I can get some insight. But ultimately, you have a choice. There's always a choice. And everybody who has ever had a heartbeat and has definitely lived long enough will experience something where... They know they can do it. You just don't know how. You just don't know how. There's something you want to accomplish. There are goals. There are things you, you want to do. You, you desperately want to do it. We all desperately want to do it. We all have goals that we just know that would be the difference in our lives. If we could just get close to that goal, let alone accomplishing the goal. I often find that if your mind goes to that, you're focusing too much on the end result and you're not focusing on what you need to do to get that goal right here, right now. And one of the ways to do that is by rediscovering your purpose. Envisioning your life in a different way. To accept and understand that you've grown since the last time you had some deep thought about your purpose. Unless you're meditating several times a day and every single day is the exact same, which a lot of people do. Most of those people are successful in life. And the ones that aren't, they will be. Because we have to adapt to who we are right now in the moment. There are people who have goals that started 10 years before the present moment. And they still haven't reached their goal. And you can ask, if there was 10 of those people, and you ask 10 of them, why haven't you met your goal after 10 years? You still trying to get down to your target weight 
Are you still trying to get that job? Are you still trying to get that house, that car? You're still waiting to get married? You're still doing A, B, and C? The question is why? It always comes back to that. Why? We can take any question and then add another question on it. Why? There's always a why. And that why is purpose. It's perception. It's what you feel you deserve from life. Not only deserve, but in a way where you think to yourself, I deserve this because I've earned it. That type of deserve. Not you deserve it because you're having a pity party and you think everything should be handed to you. We all have days where we feel like we deserve something. We have earned the right to have this particular thing. But usually, we don't ask ourselves why. And that why can lead you to a place of discovery within yourself about almost anything that's in your life. There's always a why. You can ask someone their favorite color. And then ask them why. It's interesting to see how people respond to that. And I do it a lot. I ask people all the time, why do you think this is? What do you think? I may have the answer. I may already know the answer. I want to see how they respond to it because it's very interesting because uh, depending on who you're talking to, they're either going to look at you like you're nuts and say, what do you care? What does it matter? Or they may be confused like, you know, I never thought about that. I don't know why. But I don't know why is not an acceptable answer. They do know why. They just aren't digging deep enough to find the answer or they don't care enough to find the answer. And that's their prerogative. That's their life. They can do whatever it is that they want to do to answer their truths about themselves or their non-truths about themselves. But for me personally, rediscovering your purpose is huge. It's a big part of life. We always look for people for reassurance. The people that are closest to us, we like that they know a lot about us. We want to know more about them. And we have a built-in sense of you know, the need to have reassurance, to know that we are making a difference, to have feedback, to know that whatever we're doing, something is coming out of it in a positive way. Nobody will go to a job and say, I'm working today for free. That's called a volunteer. They have a different word for that. And no one gets married and says, we're married, but we're not married. We went through all that trouble. We're actually not married, though. We're just good friends. But we just decided to get married. So that's why we have terms in life. That's why, we, that's why people renew their vows. That's why jobs have annual reviews on their best employees and their worst ones. Because we need to bring it back to center. Let's see if everything is still lining up. Let's see what we have improved upon. Let's see where we aren't improving enough on. What's distracting us? Is there something about our jobs or our priorities and our relationships that we need to focus on so the next time we have this introspection, this evaluation about ourselves, we know we're on the right track. We know where we came from. We know what we had to work with. What excuses are we making for ourselves when we shouldn't be making any? What obstacles are we self-imposing upon ourselves when we don't have to? And you have to look at everything. Everything. Just like, again, if you're looking at the ocean, it's beautiful to look at the surface of the ocean. And if you look at it long enough, you're just wondering what is underneath all that water. It doesn't look like anything could survive in that but we know that there's an ocean a deep vast alien world right underneath those waves right underneath those waves it's an unexplored world almost like an alien world that lives right underneath the water right underneath the surface of the water yet all the water is connected and when you look at that and then you look up you look at the sky and to know that that's just our atmosphere. There's so much more beyond that. So much more beyond that in space and the universe. If you stand there and think about it long enough, it makes you just feel so small. Because there's so much around us right now. 
in the moment. There's so many things going on. So many people having conversations. So many things that could change our lives forever at any moment. And when you think about that, that is a very powerful way of reconnecting with life. Just to think on those terms. That you're sandwiched in between this alien world beneath you. And above is just all this open space. Our perception of the world is skewed. We can't see all the way out into outer space. You know, they were talking about kids who live in inner cities. That they have programs now to get them out of big metropolitan areas. Like, you know, big metropolises. New York City. Los Angeles. Uh, any place that has... What you know? What they call um, you know, they pollute the sky basically, and you can't see everything. There's always a haze, call it light pollution. There's so many lights at night. When you look up at the sky, it's pitch black. You cannot see any stars. You know that they're there, but you can't see them. So they take these kids, almost like a field trip. It's a getaway, and they go out to some place that's remote to a. Um, you know, a campsite um, out into the desert. There's uh, observatories up high up in the mountains, away from light pollution from the cities and away from all the pollution of just everyday life from a giant metropolis, concrete jungle. And they allow these kids to experience what it is to look up at the sky and see what our ancestors saw thousands and thousands of years ago when they looked up at the sky when there was no such thing as light pollution. They saw the vastness of space at night in clear detail. Now, when you do something like that, your perception of who you are changes. All of those kids or any person would tell you if you grew up most of your life and you have not been able to look up at the sky and see this, the, the universe literally with your own eyeballs up at the sky. It's the equivalent of somebody coming from a desert country and they see snow for the first time. It would change the way you view life. It's the equivalent to, I'm sure, an astronaut who sees the Earth from space for the first time. It will change your life. And these kids who go out and see these things for the first time, it is unbelievable to them. They've seen it in pictures, but it's another thing to see with your own eyeballs. I remember the uh, the eclipse that happened, the Great America Eclipse, and me and my mother were so excited to see it. And I remember looking up up at the sky, and because it was right right above us, we had sat out in this perfect area. We paid money to sit out in this area where it was going to peak right over us and just clear view. And when it happened, I remember looking up and. It wasn't too much longer after that I had my awakening. Like truly, I was already was breaking out. I don't remember what year that eclipse was, but it was either the year of my awakening or right after it. Either way, it was very close. I want to say it was after I had my awakening, but I'm not for sure. But the point is, whatever was going on with me at that time, I was already looking for some rediscovering of who I was. And I remember looking up at that eclipse and just thinking to myself, I am alive. What I'm looking at is unbelievable. I'm looking at something I never thought I would ever see. This clear, to see that moon go across the sun, that was the most beautiful thing I have ever seen in my entire life. The most beautiful thing by far. And it had so much impact and weight on me. At the time, until this day, I still, I don't know if I go a few days without thinking about it. And I often go back to my pictures and look at how different the sun was, you know, being cast on the ground, that dim look. It was just an amazing energy from that day. It was just unbelievable. And sometimes we need to have events like that happen in our own lives. From our own lives. It's like the people who go down into the depths of those oceans we can't see. And they find a new species that's been down there, unaffected by this world above, for millions of years. Not thousands, millions of years. 
with no real reason to evolve at all. Completely unaware of everything that's been going on up here. It's just incredible how life is going on down there where you would think that nothing should be able to survive. Yet we, we, they're out there discovering things every single day. Discovering new species every single day. And still mapping the ocean floor. With all the technology, we've, been, we've sent probes out in the space or rovers on Mars and we still are mapping the ocean floor. Discovering new things every single day. And then out in the stars, you have these rovers on Mars discovering new things about a distant world every single day. You have the Voyager satellite taking pictures out in the deep space, sending us back photographs of Pluto and foreign bodies out in the asteroid belt. This is insane when you think about it. Just so much out there, and there's always going to be more. What if we could channel all that perception-wise into ourselves and explore ourselves with that type of depth and clarity? What answers will we get from those questions then? About why we exist, not who created us, what our purpose is. And has our purpose shifted from when we last took a good look at it, individually, on a personal level? And the only person who would know that is each individual. Because sure, it's, it's good to, that people are close enough to us where they can say, you would make an excellent fill-in-the-blank. Or you would make a very good fill-in-the-blank in regards to your purpose. Only we know if that person is anywhere near correct. And we can't say that they're 100% correct or not if we have not done the homework on ourselves. Rediscovering who you are is important. It's already extremely important to stay as balanced as possible and know who you are by understanding your values in life. Understanding your morals and your principles and understanding what it is you want out of life just on the surface level. Again, just talking about general surface level stuff like the ocean floor. The ocean uh, itself, when you look out and see the waves, you stand on the beach, you just see the water. That's what we do when we're looking at ourselves on a surface level. We're thinking to ourselves, I know I would like to do this. I know this person means a lot to me. I know that my career needs to go this way from, in order for me to feel fulfilled in life. I would like to do this and this. Remember, we have to ask ourselves a question. Why? Because a lot of times when we ask that question, again, we're trying to discover who we are in the first place, but a lot of us have discovered it. It's time to rediscover, reaffirm, reassure ourselves that we are on the right track. And by asking ourselves why it is we even want to know is a powerful question. We can come up with our purpose, but why are we concerned with coming up with that purpose? That will give you even a, a stronger sense of why your purpose is either right or wrong. For who you are. For your life. For where you see yourself down the line. Where you see yourself in an hour. But again, each person has to figure that out for themselves. Discovering yourself is the first step. You can't rediscover if you haven't already discovered. And again, the discovery is really just a surface level. The rediscovering is that reassurance. That's that digging deeper. That's getting into the crevices. Let's figure this out. Let's bring in some extra people to look at our blueprint and, and proofread and make sure that everything's aligned and everything is where it needs to be. Are we wasting anything? Are we leaving stuff on the table? Do we have more room in this area? Have we bitten off more than we can chew in this area? And why? We have to keep asking ourselves why. There's always going to be a new challenge that's going to skew whatever we are trying to become anyway. Every single day. Every day you're going to be faced with something that could send you going in the opposite direction. 
which is why it's so important to detach from situations so you can stand back and say, I got to remember that I'm standing on these boundaries and these morals for myself. This is what I know I need to do in this situation because I've done it before. I trust myself to make sure I can get through this situation. I know that I conquered that mountain. Now I know I can conquer this volcano. I know when I look at the ocean that there's more underneath. I know when I look up at the sky, there's more out there than I can see. So when you get in these situations, when the big freaking boulder comes out of the sky, hits you in the back of the head, and you don't know what happened. You can turn around, detach, and say, okay, whatever this is, I got this. Bring it on. I'm happy to do it because I'm going to learn more about myself right now. But the more questions we ask about ourselves before that unfortunate event, the better suited we are. If a knight was riding his horse in battle back in the Dark Ages, you don't wait until you're already on the horse and you're going against your enemy and start putting on your armor while you're riding. You put all the armor on before you get into the heat of the battle. You prepare before the storm. You don't react to it in real time and then try to prepare for anything like that. Whenever there's a situation in your life, you want to be prepared for it. And rediscovering life for yourself is your way of preparing. And the more knowledge you get from this world, because again, life is rediscovering itself every single day around us anyway. Everything around you is changing all the time. It's slow, incremental changes, changed nonetheless, evolving nonetheless, Adapt adaptation nonetheless. It, we can't stop these things from happening. No more you can stop yourself from getting old. Which is why, again, rediscovering who you are from time to time as often as you possibly can. I try to rediscover myself every single day through meditation. I spend at least an hour a day trying to meditate the best way that I can, find some type of way to get inside of my head, connect my mind and my emotions, see how my body's feeling, reaffirm myself through my spirituality. It's a constant rediscovery. It's not a one-time thing. It's not an annual review. It's something you should be doing daily. How am I feeling? There's a reason why I have the the section in here, how are you feeling? That is a rediscovery technique that I use. And I use it on everyone. I ask everyone, how are they feeling? How are you treating life? Because it forces you to rediscover who you are in real time. It's not good enough to sit back in life and just say, I accept this for what it is. This is more than enough. I got it. I don't need any more of life. Why? Or why not? There's always more room for improvement. There's more room for you to grow as a person. And we can see people all the time and each individual, me included, can get lost in our own journey of our purpose. We find our purpose and we say, okay, I know where I need to, I know where I need to go with this. I know I'm on the right path. I'm going after it. But over time, we don't revisit it. We don't see what needs to be tweaked. We don't see what needs to be re-examined. We're not talking to the right people. We're not getting the right insight and we get lost. We thought we were on the right track and we got lost because we didn't reaffirm, reassure ourselves every single day that we are on the right path and that we need to make small incremental adjustments every single day. We can't get so full of hubris as individuals with our goals and what we want out of life to not take the time to really dive into what it is that we want to make sure it is just that something that we want versus something that we need. Needs and wants are two different things. We need a lot of things in our life. We want a lot of things in our life. How do we know which one is which if we don't examine these things, if we don't take the time to think about it? You see a bunch of people all the time walking around like mindless zombies. 
They're going through the motions. They're completely content and comfortable. They're not asking themselves any questions. They certainly aren't asking anyone else any questions, which means they aren't learning anything. They're not connected with their mind, their body, their heart, and their soul, so their body's unbalanced. But you can go up and talk to them, and they're completely fine with their lives. And you salute them for that, because if that's what they want to be, they have every right to do that. It's their life. Which is why I tell people what other people are doing is none of your business, and what they think of you is none of your business as well. Our purpose in life is to stay in our lane and do the best that we can do for ourselves. So we are an asset to society. We are creating value and impact in our lives that will filter out and impact other people. What you do for yourself will be filtered out to other people. If you're an unhappy, miserable person, you're probably going to attract a bunch of unhealthy, unhappy, miserable people every single day. You are what you attract. We have to put the work in, though. There is no Harry Potter or magic wand that's going to turn you into wherever you wanted to be at a moment's notice so you can get through the next day, the next year, the next decade. We have to find out not only who we are, we have to find out and describe a solid description of our values, what boundaries we have, what limited beliefs we're putting upon ourselves, what disorders we have. We have to see who we're aligned with in life, what people in our life are dragging us down, what addictions we have we, we need to focus on and get rid of. Are we making life simple or are we making life more difficult than it has to be? We, we can only find these things out by asking ourselves questions. Rediscovering the truths about ourselves. We can't do that. It's going to be a long, hard road to that purpose if you even get close to it. Let alone reaching that goal. Which is why biting off more than you can chew is probably not a smart thing to do when you're trying to simplify your life and trying to get control or regain control over yourself when you start to get lost when the compass is point excuse me pointing you in the wrong direction we have to course correct ourselves can't always rely on other people places and things to turn us around and say no you should be heading in that direction because ultimately you're saying if that happens that you're putting your trust from your purpose in your life into someone else's hands we want to be in control of our own destinies. We want to be control, in control of our own goals, our morals, everything that we do in life. We should be the caretakers of those things, not other people. Seeking guidance from other people is great. Linking up with people and making life easier with a good, healthy, positive team around you is awesome. But we cannot be the weakest link on the chain when it comes to that, because those people are going to want out of you what you want out of them. If they're the right people for you and you're aligned and it's coming from a positive place and you, you all are gaining from each other, which is why healthy relationships in any form of a relationship has to be built upon trust that the other people are doing what they have to do for themselves. And you're doing what you have to do for yourself. So together you guys can combine and everybody is gaining from the existence and presence of another individual who is woke and trying to do the best that they can to become the best version of themselves. Your mission for today is as follows. If you have not found your purpose, your mission is to get out something to write with, get out something to write on, and write down all of the things that you would consider to be values in your life. What are your values? Write down all of the things that you're good at and how those things you are good at can contribute to this world. What do you have to offer? And then ask yourself why about every single one of those things. Why is it you are aligned with whatever it is you come up with? And then try to piece it together like a puzzle. 
If you haven't found your purpose, it's in there. It starts within you. And if you have found your purpose, your mission is to rediscover it, reaffirm, reassure. And you're going to do basically the same thing. Are your values the same as they were when you initially set out on your journey, when you found your purpose? Once you found it, you, you founded it and you were ready to go. You knew all of your limited beliefs, at least most of them. You know what you stand upon with your values and your morals and your principles. You know what your boundaries were. Are they still the same? Have you reached your goal? And if you have, what is the next goal? So the mission for today, regardless if you have found your purpose or you have not, is to reassure yourself, reaffirm your values, your beliefs, your morals. What has changed? What is different? What needs to be changed? What needs to be kept the same? That is your mission. To do a self-evaluation. To rediscover some of those things that you've kind of forgotten about. That are in the subconscious. It's time to brush away some cobwebs and see what's still in there. This is your day. You are here now. These are your moments. You own them. You are brave, bold, powerful. You do believe in yourself. You know you have more in the tank. You know the glass is half full. There's still more room for improvement. There is no end. Believe, believe, believe in yourself. Trust yourself. Trust that you can do whatever it takes to accomplish whatever you want from life. You don't procrastinate. You don't embellish. You don't lie. You are true to yourself. Knowledge is in your mind. Peace is in your heart. Balance is in your body. Purpose is in your soul. You are greatness. The sky is not the limit. You have purpose. Fulfilling, intentful purpose. You are here for a reason. You are unique. You are self-love, self-discipline, self-respect, self-control. You have self-awareness. You are joy, peace, happiness. You are freedom, and yet you are connected to every person, place, and thing in the universe. And if no one has told you this today, I love you. You deserve to hear that. Salute to you all. The brave never fall. Learn, laugh, and level up.